Hey there content creators, welcome to another tutorial. Today we are going to be working with Adobe Photoshop. We're going to do some basic compositing. I'm going to kind of do a tutorial from scratch for a beginner level person trying to get into the program. And what we're going to work on today is putting multiple images together into one image. This is actually an assignment that I give my students where they have to take a picture of a celebrity and cut them out of the picture that they find and put them on another background. So I am going to show you how to do that. So when you open up Photoshop, you should see a screen that looks something like this. Depending on what version you have, you'll have a different picture here. Uh, all recent things you might have looked at are going to be down here. But the most important thing, you're starting a brand new file. So you're going to click new file. You'll come up with all the different options for files that you could pick. There are recent ones, again, if you've been working in Photoshop, and then there are suggested formats that you can use. If you are going to be working to make a printable photo, seven by five inches or three by two or six by four. If you're working in print, you're going to be able to find options for letter size, legal size, tabloid. Uh, if you're working in terms of web, you've got different aspect ratios for screen sizes. Art and illustration is here. They have pixel grids, posters. They also have sizes for different iPhones and other presets like that. They're all available. Film and TV, if you know you're going to an HD screen or you know you're going to a 4K screen, options abound. But I'm going to be working with just a picture. I'm going to stick with 7 by 5 for this one, 7 inches five inches. You could always customize over here. Do you want to look in pixels, centimeters, anything like that? We're going to keep it with seven by five and I'm going to keep it in landscape mode, but you could always just easily switch between landscape and portrait. And you have the ability to change all these settings once you're in a document as well. But of course, picking it right now is usually the easiest. You can just go ahead and click create. You also, if you wanted to, can always come here and make sure that your background disappears or anything like that before you get started. I'm just going to leave it with the default RGB color, 8-bit, white background, hit create, and here we are. I now have my document, my 5-inch by 7-inch picture. You can see over here, I have a panel called layers. As I put everything together, this is where all of those layers are going to be. I'm eventually going to have a layer where I have a location. On top of that, there'll be another layer that has a picture of a celebrity. And on top of that, I'm going to put a picture of myself. So it looks like I'm with said celebrity. This background that's here right now, I don't actually need this layer to be here, but for right now, I'll leave it until I get another layer in there. Over here on my left, I have my tools. Now, if your window doesn't look like this, you don't have the exact same layout of things, you can always fix that in Adobe by going to the different workspaces. This is one of the places, one of the things they have across their different applications. The workspace tab, which is always up here in Windows, allows you to set your windows up according to suggested uh, application. So if you know you're working in 3D or you know you're going to do motion animation, if I were to click that workspace, you'll see the timeline opens up automatically down here for me to start working in animation. I'm not planning on doing that today, so I won't stick with that. I'll come back to my workspace and I'm going to just set it to essentials. If yours already says essentials and it doesn't look like this, if it ever doesn't look the way you want it to, but it already says you're in the right workspace, you can always come down and tell it to reset. And that is going to set everything back to where Photoshop has it originally. As you become more experienced of a Photoshop user, if you ever have a workspace that you would like to create, you could move your windows wherever you want them, and then you'll click new workspace, and you can save your current layout of wherever you put everything under new workspace, and then that'll always be here under your uh, workspaces panel, so you can set up Photoshop however you want. In this case, I'm sticking with the essentials. I have my document. You can see here it's called Untitled One. We'll save that at some point and give it a better name than that. And over here, I have my toolbars. Now, I said I'm going to bring some stuff in. Before I show you how to use the tools, let's bring some photos into this. I have some set up on my computer already. 
that I had just specially ready to go for today's tutorial. Photoshop compositing images, and I've got three JPEGs that I'm going to open. You could open things one at a time. You could select multiple. I'm holding down the command key on my Mac. That would be the control key on your PC that lets you click multiple items and hit open. Photoshop is going to open them all up, and you can see now that I have them all laid out up here. Every open picture is individually placed right here. The photo that you're seeing right now is a picture of Mont Saint Michel in France. It's a famous monastery. I traveled there with some students once. I'm just going to use that as my background. I also have a selfie of myself on some road in Europe. I'm going to end up cutting myself out of that and we're going to put my face here in Mont Saint Michel. And of course, my celebrity, in this case, straight from a certain theme park that will remain nameless for now. I have this photo of a uh, some character from some show. You may or may not have heard of it. It's no big deal. We're going to cut him out and we are going to put him on top of my background. But of course, we said that we want that background to be here on my five by seven canvas. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring this entire image onto my five by seven canvas. And to do that, I'm going to go down to the layer and you can see I'm now clicking and dragging the layer and I'm going to take the layer and drag it all the way up to that untitled image, bring it into the middle and drop. And it's much bl more blown up than it looked like when I was on my actual original photo, and that's because the screen resolution, the size of that image is bigger than five inches by seven inches. So my first step now will be to shrink that. To shrink it, I'm gonna use a tool called the transform tool. The transform tool is found by hitting command T. It's gonna give me little handles to drag in the size of my image. When I hit command T or control T, if you're on a PC, it should outline your image. The problem is I can't see around my image. So in order to find out where I am, I am going to zoom out. There are a couple of different ways to zoom out. Right down here, you'll see there is a zoom tool. If I click on that, I now have the ability to zoom in. If I click here, it's a plus sign. If I hold down the option key, or Alt if you're on a PC, that's gonna give me the ability to zoom out. Once you're zoomed out, if you hit Command or Control T, now you can see where the edges of your image are. So, first tool that we're learning here, the Zoom tool. Again, allows me to zoom in or zoom out. Another tool that often gets used in relation to zooming is called the Hand tool. You see, I my cursor just, just turned into a hand. I did that by holding down the space bar. What the hand tool lets you do is while you're zoomed in, if you go to the hand tool, again, hold down space bar, you can now click and move the visible area of the screen. I'm not actually moving the picture on my canvas. I'm just moving what part of it I'm looking at. So if I were to now zoom back out, that's the zoom tool hold down Option or Alt if you're on a PC and zoom out, you can see that I still have the exact same image. It has not changed even from when I was zoomed in and then used the hand and tried to move around. When I zoom back out, I still have the exact same area of my photo. So let's zoom out and then hit Command or Control T for my transform tool. And now I am going to drag this in from a corner. And you can see as I drag, it's not staying in proportion. In order to make it stay in proportion, you've got to hold down the shift key. If I click shift, you're going to watch. You'll see the handles now automatically will move into my proper proportion. So I'm not stretching my image at all. I'm going to just drag that down try to align with my corner here and zoom it back out. Here we go. Now I have the entire image, the part of it that I wanna use right there. You can get out of the transform tool by hitting enter or by clicking off of it. Either way, now that I have enter, I can zoom back in. 
there is my what I'm going to use as my background. I mentioned before, I don't even need this background layer here. It's just by default there for me when I start a new canvas. But in this case, this is going to be the bottom part of my image, the furthest back as I start layering things on top of it. So the next thing I want is to bring my celebrity in. So I'm going to come up to my celebrity picture of this random character who I found at some unknown theme park. And I am going to select everything around that character so I can remove him from his background. In order to do that, I'm going to use one of my selection tools. There are many selection tools right here in these three tools underneath your normal move tool. The first selection tool is called the rectangular marquee tool. What the marquee tool allows you to do is select exact shapes. Here it's a rectangle. If I were to hold down on the rectangular marquee tool, I also get an elliptical or a single row or column marquee tool. These are very useful if you're dealing with uh, specifically animated boxes or circles. You can always select exact ellipses or circles. If I hold shift, this stays in a perfect proportion for a circle. All right. I also have a series of tools here called the lasso tools. The regular lasso tool right on top allows me to just click and start dragging a selection around my character. And you can see it completed a circle. It com kind of, as soon as I let go, it just automatically snapped back and added all the, everything that was around what I selected into a little loop. It also included my circle. The reason it included my circle, these buttons up here tell you whether or not the new selection you're making is going to make a completely brand new selection. That's this option. Whether it's going to add to your existing selections, subtract from your existing selections, or select only what is intersected by your two selections. So let me show you what I mean there. If I go to this one, anything I select now is going to make the rest of these deselect. So let's say I start lassoing around this character. When I let go, you can see my other selections went away. But if I come up to this one where I am now adding to it, now if I were to circle around this character's head, you can see it did not deselect what I had down here. I'm now selecting both of them. If I turn this to subtraction, you can now see that anything I select, just nothing's happening. And the reason why it's only going to subtract from what my current selection is. So if I were to overlap here, it's going to subtract out that little chunk that was already in my selection. This is a way where you can remove pieces of your selection without removing the rest of it. And finally, this piece here will make it so that only the parts that are both selected remain. So if I make this weird looking shape, all that's going to be left will be the part where they overlap and everything else is now deselected. To deselect anything in general is command or control D. You can find that right here. Select, deselect, and now you can start over with fresh selection. We've already seen how the lasso tool works because you can use the lasso tool to just draw around a character. But also in there, there is one called the magnetic lasso tool. I want to focus on this one really quickly because what the magnetic lasso tool allows you to do, instead of clicking and dragging, I'm just going to click and now I'm moving my mouse up along the cape. And Photoshop is automatically looking for contrast as I move along the character to find out where it should put my selection. And you can click as you go to let Photoshop know that like, hey, this is an exact place where I should have a point. You can see it has all those little dots. It's letting me know that it's tracing a selection for me. I'm going to click here and I'm going to come back down, even though I know I'm not selecting the rest of my character. And notice what happens when I get back to where I started. My mouse turned into Right there, it's the magnet with a little tiny circle on the bottom. That circle means I'm about to complete my loop. When I click right now, 
that whole selection now chooses for me. It's a very convenient tool for trying to tr cut out a shape where you don't want to have to draw it yourself with the lasso tool. The magnetic lasso tool will automatically trace what you needed. And again, if you stay on the addition mode, I can now keep tracing other parts of my character going around their head, for example. And when I finish that loop, it's going to add it to the rest of my selection because I'm still on the additive mode up here. So that's the lasso tool and the magnetic lasso tool. Super useful. And the last thing I'm going to show you is right beneath them. Right here, I have my magic wand tool. The magic wand tool is great if everything is a similar color. So for example, when I come down here, uh, let's say I wanted to take some of this road behind him. When I hit the magic wand tool, you can see it's now trying to select all of that. You have options up here for trying to figure out just how uh, much of the same color an object has to be. It's not going to work too well here because I have no real solid colors, but the magic wand tool is great when you're trying to remove, say, a solid background from an animated picture. Um, but as you change the tolerance, if I make the tolerance number go higher, you'll see it's selected a lot more of my image. It was, it allowed for there to be more difference in my color. When I make that number smaller, I'm gonna deselect that, I hit Command D to do that. With that number being smaller, it is looking for there to be a lot less difference in color. That's the magic wand tool, but that of course isn't even the one I really wanna show you. It's the quick selection tool. The quick selection tool lets you just click and drag over the character and it automatically starts adding in everything you want. And notice you still have the same new selection versus add to the selection or subtract from the selection. I'm going to keep it on add and I'm just going to click and drag over my character and look at how that selection just starts picking everything as I drag over it. So I'm gonna be able to select everything on my character here and hopefully not miss anything. So those are the selection tools. That's how you use them. This is probably the easiest one, the quick selection tool for selecting a character that you're gonna to wanna to take off your background eventually. Now, since I have the majority of my selection, I just wanna clear cover over the edges, make sure that I got everything. So I am gonna, again, zoom in. Another way you can zoom in or out quickly on a Photoshop document is by hitting Command or Control and the equal sign. It's really also the plus sign. Command plus will let me zoom in and then I can scroll around and you can see I'm selected around here. Looks good. I'm gonna come around here and my selection didn't quite get around his boots here. I wanna add that in. So I'm gonna use any of the selection tools that work. You could use the lasso. I could stay on quick selection. Just make sure you're on the additive mode and I can add to my selection by clicking and dragging over that. And I'm gonna scroll over here. My selection looks good. It looks good right here. I got a little bit of the ground and I don't need that ground to be there. So I'm gonna switch to the minus sign and I am gonna subtract that ground out of my selection. As I trace over it now, you can see it's being removed from the rest of my selection. And that way I'll only have my character's cape. Make sure we get every little bit right there. Okay, I'm scrolling back up and looks like I missed part of his hand here. I'm still on additive mode. I will click and drag to get the rest of that hand, get the rest of his glove and, oh, right there, it went a little too far. I'm gonna go back to minus and we're gonna subtract out those extra bits that I didn't need on the selection. This is all just time consuming. I might speed this up right now so that you don't have to watch me do the rest.
Okay, so I am happy with my selection. I think I have just my character and not his background. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn him into his own layer. There are different ways that you could get rid of his background. The one I'm gonna use doesn't change my original background. It just creates my character on top of that. I'm gonna use Command or Control J. When I hit that, you can see a new layer just popped up. That layer, if I turn off my background, is just my character. It's just him. It didn't cut him out of the original image. The original image is still right here. It just recreated everything that I had in my selection as its own individual layer. And now just like I took my background and I had taken that and I dragged it over into my image, now I can take my celebrity and drag him into that image. And again, he's too big. I'm gonna zoom out, Command minus. I'm selected on his layer. I'm gonna hit Command T, and I'm going to hold down Shift as I resize him and put him into the image. Command plus to zoom back in. And now it looks like my character is walking along the beach in front of that cathedral. And now, finally, I'm going to do the same thing. Nothing too new to put yourself into the photo. You're going to use the same selection tools. Uh, in this case, I'll use that quick selection again. And I'll just start clicking and dragging until I have my whole character Get the rest of my hair in there. Come on down over here. And it looks like I might have picked up a little bit of bicycle. Take that out. Take that out. And that looks like it. Command minus. And then again, command or control J. Now my person is my own layer. I'm going to take that, drag it back in, drop it. Command T for transform tool, shrink myself down, put myself in that same corner so that it looks like I'm taking a selfie here. And just like that, I'm taking a selfie with celebrity in the background in another location. In a more advanced tutorial, we'll learn how to actually change the layer adjustments a little bit, make them look like they might blend a little better, give them a bit of the same color grading. But for now, I'm just gonna save this because I think I'm finished. File save as is the way we're gonna get this to not say untitled one anymore. File save as, this is where you'll be able to choose where to put it. I like to save things locally, not in the cloud. And I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna call it composite image. Of course, you'll call yours whatever you want. Um, it is, you should leave it as a .psd. That is a Photoshop document that allows you to keep coming in and editing it. Of course, not everybody can read a Photoshop document. So if after you save this, you're like, wait a minute, I wanna, share this to my phone, send it to a friend. You'll of course want a JPEG of it. So you can always do that by going to file, export and export as, and you'll have the option here to make it a JPEG. You don't have to change any of these. These are all gonna default to the size that we already made. It's a five by seven photo. So when I click export, I now will have my composite image as a JPEG. It'll open on your computer or on your phone, or you can send it to wherever you need to to get it printed up and then have it as your picture. So that's it. We learned how to create a new document. We learned how to open existing pictures. We learned how to cut parts of those pictures out using the selection tool and then turning them into their own layers. We learned how to bring those layers and composite them together in one particular image and finally save it and if necessary export it i hope you learned something and let me know in the comments what else you would like to see keep on creating and i will see you next time